Hello, I'm Joe Puckett, and I want to welcome you to part three of my new video series on Church Usher Safety and Security. I hope you've been able to view the other two videos in this series, and I hope you are seeing where this information will help you become much more confident in uh, your security, your usher duties, your security team duties, or your work as a ministry leader. If you have not seen those first two videos, I hope you will go to Church Security A to Z dot com and check those out while they are still available. I see so many ministry security programs that are floundering and I have been on a mission for several years to help those programs. I want to help you and your church's safety and security ministry. I have a lot of experience that I have been blessed with including law enforcement experience, training in live seminars around the U.S. and security audits where I hear and see the issues churches are having whether they are large or small ministries. I also hear from thousands of people that interact with me on my podcasts about church security issues. It does not take much to improve your program and make it one of the best security programs in ministry. A program that is ready to handle many situations and is looking in the right places for the preparation, has the energy and its ushers and security members know what they should be doing when issues break out and they are talking about those plans. That's what makes good programs. So here's what I would like to do. This is the final video in this series that I have prepared for you. I wanna share the planned information, which is extremely helpful for our confidence, direction and focus. Then I wanna to talk to you about Church Usher Safety and Security Training courses or the course that I'm proposing for you, which you can enroll in today. This course has a small fee and limited enrollment with just a short time left in that ability to get into the online training program, which I'll talk to you about again here in just a few minutes. So let's talk about getting more focused and planning for the areas we need to plan for our church security. So now what I wanna talk about is violence trends. What are the issues that really do face you statistically across the nation? And this is what I look at relative to what do we need to be focused on? I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen. You can't control the negative events that might happen to your ministry, but what you can control is your preparation, your planning for those, your focus on uh, what needs to be done. And here's one of those areas that I wanna help you with. First of all, we look at uh, deadly incidents, if we're looking at statistics, and this one I don't necessarily like. These are deadly incidents that occurred at faith-based ministries, and I'm narrowing the focus a little bit. I use the Bureau of Justice statistics when I'm compiling my information, and uh, they gather information from police reports, those kind of things across the nation. And realistically, I don't like this statistic because there's a lot of folks out there that push these numbers that are even bigger than what I have here for you. But the problem is these numbers oftentimes reflect things that are going on on Tuesday mornings at four o'clock in the morning when there's a gang fight down the street and somebody flees and gets shot in your parking lot kind of thing and, and you're, nobody's around. So our security programs would not be able to handle those situations, nor you know, do we really uh, uh, need to be focused on those kinds of things. We're worried about when our people are there and the deaths that occur in those situations during our ministry times, uh, just before, just after our ministries, those are the important ones, but they are far fewer than what's often pushed to us or reported. So what I do wanna do though, they do happen, the deaths occur at our facilities, but what I do wanna do is get to the day-to-day -day stuff that's likely to happen or week-to-week -week stuff, and let's talk about those. Statistics, if you look back many years now, uh, the average stays about the same. It's increased just a little bit, but that data that's been gathered over many, many years and, and compiled through the Bureau of Justice Statistics, other areas, I've been tracking it for a number of years as well. That data tells us here, as you can see, that what kind of things do we need to focus on? And really some of the big issues are robbery, robbery of our people, our monies, those kinds of things. Domestic violence situations, those are certainly a, a part of the major incidents or, or attacks that occur to our churches. There's random walk-by, drive-by type stuff, but it's not as big as some of the other issues. There's personal conflicts. So if you start looking at 
domestic violence situations and personal conflict, uh, if you separate, put those two items together here, as we see in the statistics, uh, those kinds of fights and issues make up about 30% of our major incidents as some kind of domestic relationship issue or personal conflict. So gang related is not as big of a deal, but it's there. Mental health issues, 10 per, almost 10% of the issues and so on as you look at that. So I like to get focused on the big issues. Guns are involved in a, a high percentage of major incidents at our worship facilities or worship locations. Almost 60% are gun issues. Knives are certainly part of it at uh, 17%. And then there's other issues as you look down those statistics. Now here's what begins to paint a picture for me, and this is really what I'm wanting to share with you. Uh, things like this is what I also share in the uh, training program that we're talking about coming up here a little bit that you can sign up for. We look at the aggressors, males by far the biggest aggressor, almost 92%. That flex fluctuates a little bit year to year, but it's pretty consistent. The male is a problem. Here becomes some golden information for me though. It's rare or only a quarter of the situations, 25% of people causing problems or aggressors uh, at, our, at our facilities are associated with your organization. So a majority of folks, three quarters, 75% of the folks that cause problems are not associated with your ministry. They haven't been in the past and they're not currently. So if we put these statistics together, looking at this, if you see somebody out in the parking lot or somebody enters the facility that's a male and you do not recognize them, you haven't seen them before, this statistically is a person you want to focus on. This helps you make decisions. Do I ask for somebody else to come over here and we watch this person or we go talk to them? Statistically, yes, the male who you've not seen before, who's not affiliated with your organization, is a person you want to look at. And now if they're doing something else odd, strange behavior, you really want to get focused on them. If you look at major incidents, look at the statistics, uh, uh, only 33% of the incidents actually occur inside your facility, in the building. 66, almost 67% of major incidents at faith-based ministries occur outside. They occur on the ministry property, your location, but they occur outside the building. Here's another great statistic. During uh, event hours, only 40%, almost 41%. Off hours, almost 60% of the incidents. So if we start looking at statistics, off hours outside your facilities is where the problems occur. Now I do have a concern if you look at trends, if you look at issues, I do have a concern of the people showing up before or leaving afterwards by themselves. Statistically, you look at that, that is an issue. It fits within these parameters as they walk into the parking lot. Uh, uh, there are several of those incidents that I can name as they walk into the parking lot, somebody attacks them, somebody robs them. We have numerous uh, incidents where we have a volunteer that shows up early to unlock the doors of our ministry. They're there by themselves. They're showing up early, off hours, outside the facility, they get attacked. So we want to be paying attention to those kind of things. 71%, almost 72% are single attackers. So the single male uh, that's not associated with your ministry outside your facility uh, uh, is a problem in the off hours. That, if you see that person walking around, so if you're in charge of things, if you're in charge of security or you're a ministry leader, that would be some of my focus. I know it's hard to get volunteers, it's hard to get people to unlock and lock up, but realistically, that would be some of my focus as an usher or as a ministry leader. People that are here by themselves opening up or, or closing up. It, we wanted to think about doing that in twos. Can we get two volunteers to do that instead of just one? And I know it's tough to find those. Our elderly females are the best volunteers, but they should not be locking or unlocking our facilities by themselves. Just not a good idea. Some major incidents as we just brush through these things, you know, that have occurred. And, and I picked a time period just because there's, it goes on and on the list. Of course, remember uh, Charleston, South Carolina, nine people are killed in an evening study. 
Uh, most all of us remember that. I think that was just outside of that time period. Omaha, Nebraska, a woman in a church lobby. She's by herself. The lobby's open. Uh, she's attacked and robbed. South Bend, Indiana, a man shoots the drummer who's leaving by himself after church in the afternoon by himself outside the facility. Uh, South Carolina, 74-year-old female. She's gardening by herself, and she is attacked and uh, beaten, and I believe her car was stolen. Uh, it was a pretty uh, a bad deal. Bullard, Texas, a man comes to the church with a gun. Uh, his idea is he wants to kill infidels. He's met uh, at the church doors by ushers, which is awesome. Uh, I like that. I talk in the program about screening and the best places for us to screen. And one of those great places is right at the entrance door where we can see all those statistically problem areas. They screen him at the front door. They meet him. They stop him. He's got a gun on his hip. What do they do? They bring him inside uh, and take him to the head pastor who he, they want to uh, talk with him and minister to him. So Grass Valley, California, a woman's opening the church. Great, another one of these elderly females that's a great volunteer, very faithful. Uh, she's opening up the church uh, very early in the morning, I think about 5.30 a.m. She's by herself and she gets attacked, beaten severely. In fact, she spends, I believe, a couple of months in the hospital because of those beatings. So. Uh, Ogden, Utah, a man shot during mass inside the service, one of those domestic dispute situations that we may or may not be aware of, so we should be watching for those kind of things. But uh, New Mexico, a man shot during funeral service at a church. Maryland, a man seeking help, stabs and kills uh, a, a man and injures a woman. He's at a, it's kind of a camp retreat thing associated with the church, and that's where he begins the attack. And then many of us might remember the small, small church in Selma, Alabama, that uh, a man upset over a breakup with his uh, girlfriend enters and begins uh, a violent spree. A very, very small church. In fact, you can see the pastor on the internet does a little interview afterwards where he thought nothing is ever going to happen in this small little church. It seemed like they only had about 30 people. Uh, attending the church regularly, and uh, he was sadly mistaken, and he admits it. He, he's, he's definitely into doing stuff now. So we look at statistics, uh, and I'm just throwing some things out here for you. Uh, we look at children's safety and security. High number of uh, sex offenders, registered sex offenders out there. I don't believe most of them are predators or are problems for our children, but there is certainly a percentage of these folks that are out there running around that are a problem, that are seeking to further victimize. And so various states, you can look up your own state, various states have more than others, certainly. Uh, and I've just put a list on here and highlighted some uh, uh, for my different training events. But realistically, we all have this issue. Some of these uh, numbers are uh, folks that I don't consider, again, to be predators. But uh, there is a big chunk, there is a chunk here I will say that are what I would consider people that we need to watch uh, and protect our children from in our ministry. So, so what are the likely issues? This is what I walk away with. What do we know nationally that's happening and occurring to our churches? This is the stuff we need to be focused on. And I'm giving you a little bit of insight. I give you a lot more in the uh, training course that I'm certainly gonna promote to you here in a moment. But uh, these are likely issues. What should we be prepared, prepared for? We should be prepared for medical emergencies, and many of you have already gone through those where somebody drops in a service or uh, during a service, opening, closing kind of thing. We got to be prepared for those. Disorderly service or disorderly conduct, service interruptions, you got to be prepared for those. And I am so, so shocked at how many of our ministries are not prepared. We know they're going to happen. They're likely to happen, but we're not prepared for them. We don't have people identified. We don't discuss these things and we don't have people that know, yes, I'm supposed to react. And this is one of those areas that becomes very evident when we don't do that because somebody stands up and interrupts and I've heard the stories and nobody does anything about it. We just stand and listen to her or listen to him because they're interrupting and nobody is confident in what to do. And it takes a minute or two before a pastor or priest or somebody will actually interact with them. So we should be getting ready for those things. Disorderly uh, uh, domestic related issues 
custody disputes, problems between parents, husband and wife issues, those kind of things, those are likely occur to, to occur in your ministry session. So we need to be prepared for those. Those are people are coming to you for help. They're in difficult situations. They're not getting along in their relationships. Problems are going to happen. And so we should be discussing those kind of things. We should be talking about it amongst the ushers. You as an usher should be preparing your mind. What are you going to do if these things happen? If we find out about restraining orders, uh, no contact orders, these are huge issues uh, that we'll talk more about in the actual uh, training course. So these are huge issues, sensitive issues, and this is areas that can get us into trouble uh, when we don't handle them correctly. Issues in the parking lot or around the perimeter of your facility. Don't forget, statistically, a high number of these issues are not going to occur inside your building. They're going to occur, occur outside our building. So we want to be looking at our parking lots. We want to have folks, if you're an usher or your usher team, you want to have folks that are coming in, taking offerings, passing out stuff to the visitors, and going back out to the parking lot, maybe coming back in uh, uh, for another duty that they need to do, and then somebody's back out to the parking lot looking and checking on things. That's very important for vandalism, attacks, arsons, abductions, those kind of things. More than likely, many of you have probably already gone through it, vandalism to vehicles, thefts from cars, those kinds of things occur too often, realistically. And then we need to prepare for natural disasters, earthquakes, power outages. I think we should have a plan uh, as we look at these things because they're likely to happen at some point, some inconvenience or some kind of issue. And I think we always need to be on the look for uh, uh, predators. We need to always be protecting our children. And this is another area where we tend to get into uh, an idea that, oh, they're getting to be 12 or 13 years old and they're gonna be in a little side building for their little Sunday school or whatever you call it. Uh, and so we kind of tend to forget about them as they get older. But if you look at the statistics, unfortunately, the 14, 15, 17 year olds are and 16 are the uh, most victimized uh, in public oftentimes or in these more uh, spaces like our churches. So we need to be taking care of our small children, but we need to be taking care of our kids as I see it up till the age of 18. And we'll talk about that more. Uh, uh, members attacked. Hey, you got to be prepared for that just before services, just after. We want to be prepared for those things because those are the issues that are happening. What's happening across our nation? That's one issue that's happening. So we should be prepared for that and trying to figure out what are we going to do. And then, of course, the violence. Here's the deal. The active shooter, violent intruder, not likely to happen. Statistically, it's not likely to happen to you. It does happen across our nation, but it's still not likely to happen to you if you're watching this. But here's the problem. If you don't prepare for it, if you don't have a plan for it personally or as a team or as a ministry leader, then things can be catastrophic when they do occur. We can have a high percentage of people injured or killed in those situations uh, because we don't have a plan. So we have to prepare for it as I see it. Some kind of plan. What's your plan? Uh, and so I, I don't want to push any of my thoughts on you necessarily, but what is your plan? You got to have something because it's a likely issue that we're going to have to deal with. So those are my focuses. Those are the things that I think are likely to happen. And, and it's not just my opinion, it's statistics. Tell us that those are the, that's, that should be the plan book right there, the playbook. What are we getting ready for as a usher, me individually? What are we getting ready for as a team? Or what should I be looking at as a ministry leader when it comes to these items? Uh, uh, because those are the things that are likely to occur. So uh, I want to make sure that we are at least talking about them. That's an important to give you direction and get your energy going and give you confidence of what we should be talking about. So as we're finishing this discussion, I'd like to start an additional discussion with you. I have developed a church usher safety and security training course while training while interacting and discussing church security with the members of various churches across many states of this great nation. This program is simple information uh, that feedback tells me has great impact on your confidence in what needs to be done 
and helps your team become more effective and overall it gives leaders more comfort that the questions and concerns are actually being addressed. Now this information is available to you for a limited time at a very affordable price. The price to gain this valuable information and start this next training course that I'm talking about today is only $57. It's over six hours of value-packed instruction. Once you purchase, you can start the training immediately and you have up to one year to complete the course on your schedule at your convenience. But here's another important reason that you want to register today. In the next week, we will be closing public registration so that we can focus on serving those who signed up for the important training. We only open registrations to this course a few times each year. We are also offering this session with several bonus videos in the training. Bonus one is video discussion about being comfortable with calling 911. Uh, calling them for help is a very important task that we need our minds to be comfortable with. In fact, in this training, we have a discussion with an emergency dispatcher on the topic. The next bonus is about active listening and crisis communication with difficult people and those in crisis or becoming violent. The third bonus in this material is about reading body language to help you see a liar and a person who may be preparing to attack you or fight with you. We also have a great training discussion about preparing for an active shooter. These bonuses are in addition to the already great information included in the Usher Safety and Security Training, including evaluating the situation and your surroundings dealing with difficult people. We also include in this material planning and preparing for many different emergencies. We have lots of discussions about that. Protecting the children's ministry, focusing on problems, areas uh, that may be an issue for your ministry. And this training is simply packed with information. If you want to get this information, this boost to your confidence, boost to your program and the direction of your security teams or focus or concepts, you will need to register now for the program. This opportunity with these bonuses and at this price will be gone in just a few days. The registration is on this and other pages of this website. Just look for the yellow orange button, the button that guides you to register now for the training. If you are seeing this video anywhere but on my website, please go to churchsecurityatoz.com and register now to reserve your seat and get started. When you start this training, you will have a handout at the beginning to download, print, and follow along with the training if you choose. You can then view the training videos on your desktop computer, a laptop, and even a smartphone. It is set up to be convenient and on your schedule. If you want to get this convenient and packed church safety and security program as it is designed with these bonuses and at this low price, please register now. I want you to get this program to improve your safety and security and that of your ministry before the registration closes. This will be your last chance to get in at the price with these bonuses. So if you lack confidence in what you should be doing for your ministry security, or you're looking at limited resources and what appears to be an overwhelming task to protect your people, then register today before this public registration for this course closes. This is not pie in the sky ideas. This is practical information that I have lived, information that I have been hearing from hundreds of people taking my live seminars and had the input of many who have applied the information. Unfortunately, if you put this training off, the security that you feel called to provide is not the best that it could be. Imagine what it will be like to have additional input into your programs. You feel more confident and have clear direction on what you need to do, and you are truly protecting people and securing a ministry, and that's the icing on the cake. If you've ever thought you need more input into your security mission, if you've ever wanted more confidence in the direction you are trying to take, your security ministry, click on that yellow button, register for this course, and let's get started right now. I look forward to seeing you on the inside and sharing more with you.